Now, here's where it came from, and I like to, to, talk, to talk about this because I think it's kind of interesting. In 1930, a very wealthy man looked at American schools and said, American schools aren't doing enough. They're, they're not as strong as they perhaps could be. So excited. Go. <laughs> and so, um, and, and you see his name. So you see where the name is going to come from. He went to one of the best schools in the US, a, a private school, and he said, I want to give you some money if you can help me come up with a program to help improve the way schools work. So they thought about it and they studied the problem and they came up with. Well, the problem is, in class, we don't let kids talk enough. Now, the biggest problem with that is, of course, classroom management. How are we going to manage them if we just let them talk the way that they want to? So what they did was he funded and bought a number of tables because they said this is going to change the way school can work. So it bears his name, and this is what it looks like. Now think, for first of all, if somebody is walking through your school and they look into the cl classrooms and they see things the way that they normally do with a, an adult standing in front of kids and they're all in rows, what does it l look like to look like this? What's the big change? The teacher is no longer in the front. They're part of the cycle or the circle. Exactly. So uh, they're all learners. Hi trying to give, like, you know, to, uh, to discuss what they're talking about. So the setting helps discussion. Exactly. So we can all see each other and listen to each yep. other. You all see each other. You all hear and attend to each other. Anything else about how that it is changed and new? It's like a collaborative um, atmosphere, and there's a sense of respect. So everyone gets to be heard. Right. Exactly. Two great, great words there. It's collaborative, and they're respecting each other. Wow. So what, what do you do in class then? What's the big deal about that? Well, here is what this is not. Because that's, that's probably the first thing to tell you. It's not me standing in front of a, of a class saying, here's what you have to know for the test. It is not about trying to just get through content and convey facts, which is what I sort of thought school was for a long, long time, and it was for um, yes, uh, us. It's not Socratic. Now, Socratic goes back to Socrates, and Socratic is when I ask something and you raise your, your, your hand, and it's me to you, to me to you, to me to, to you. It's not that either. It's not waiting to get through stuff and then saying, do you have anything you want to ask? So those are all the knots. Not, 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 not. Here is what it is. And the first thing was the biggest thing for me to deal with. In class, in a Harkness, in, in the methodology, I have my mouth shut. Oh my gosh, that is this huge thing that I shut up and let them talk. <laughs> Two, it's about you put them in the center of what they're trying to figure out that they have to know and what it means. Three, they're experiencing how you process and construct some knowledge. Four, it's about them interpreting something for themselves and not just that they write down what I say it means. Five, they discover something for themselves. And then finally, what did all of this mean? So in terms of a methodology, the first one is, of course, the biggest thing. I shut up. So what do I do in class? I kind of just watch. And I draw a bunch of lines. And I'll show you that in just a moment. So here is um, a model of what class has been like since Socrates. 
you know, I stand uh, up here as I am right, right, right now. I write things on the board. I tell you things. I conclude for you. You write down the notes. Then you take a test. And if you get 90% of that right, I give you an A minus. And we're all very happy. This is the Harkness model. And you notice, what do you see about those two to contrast the two models? What is, what is the biggest change? Yes? It's like the students are communicating with each other and the teacher is like, like the other picture, we just have the teacher and the teacher is like, Right. It's, it's I say and you tell me something and I, I validate that you're right and we all feel good. And so it's back and forth and back and forth. What do you think is the biggest scary thing in doing that model? Responsibility goes back to the students. Yeah, they're responsible. They, they better speak because if I'm not going to speak, what's going to happen in class then? What if there's silence? Woo, none of us likes that, right? that you ask something and you want them to say something fast because then that means that you've done a good job. That silence is, is something you may have to deal with and that's not the worst thing ever too. Here, if the teacher is no longer the source of knowledge. You know. That is so strange. I am not the fount of knowledge. <laughs> that they, now what they have to do is be prepared, right? They have to come prepared with something and they have to speak. They have to ask the right questions. Exactly. They have to know how do you even start to think about that. Because what they're usually wondering is if a fact is right and not so much what something means and what it might mean. So there is a class. So here's what I do in class. That's my class one day. I sit and I draw who speaks when. <laughs> That's all I do. Now, I will say how long that we're going to do this because it doesn't have to be the whole class. It, it can be any amount of time you want it to mean. And I generally stop halfway through and I show them the drawing and say, do you like this? <laughs> you like the way you see this? Now, there may be somebody who's not spoken yet. Guess what? They're supposed to speak too. So what, what, what do we say about that? Well, here's the first thing. You discuss the method first. And you do it in the best way. You say, I want to give a group grade of an A to the class. What has to happen for you to get a group grade of an A? Guess what somebody says invariably first? What's the first thing that somebody thinks about? They're going, group grade of an A, the grade we all want. What has to happen? Answer all the questions. What? Sorry? Answer all the tests. Um, even before that, somebody I mean, what's the most obvious thing about an A for this? Because yes, for that. Maybe everybody has to. Yes. Somebody, and they usually sort of look scared and say, I guess everybody has to speak. And I shake my head, yeah, that's what has to happen. So they know what has to happen. Then the fun part is somebody might say, what if somebody doesn't say anything? And I say, what should we do? Somebody thinks about it and says, I could turn and ask them what they think. <laughs> the most obvious thing, but I'm not the one doing it. And so I say, let's discuss that. How do you prepare for class? Well, it's generally about something that they've read or done to prepare for class. So instead of that they come into class and they are this blank slate that we write upon, they come having read something or done a math equation or a lab or something. We talk about the group grade. What has to be in place? What if there's silence? What do you think I say when they say, well, what if nobody says anything? Excuse me? Can you, can you take care of that by giving them a hint? Yes. Or at the, let's say, starting point. Yep. So now, what I have found is I've never had a silence, actually. <laughs> there just hasn't been one. And I think it's because if the first one of these goes well, 
they are thrilled. And to have them go well, it's not that hard in that you say, here's how long that we're going to do this. I'm going to draw the graphics. So I show them and say, you know, here's a class from last year. Here's what they did. And what they see is, oh my gosh, everybody speaks. Everyone is in this. They're codependent on each other. I make the graphic, and then here's that thing. I let go. I sit back and draw my lines. Now, one of the things, too, that is really interesting is I don't know who's going to start. And I just say, well, we're going to start. Somebody is going to say the first thing. It's usually somebody who likes to talk anyway, which makes sense, right? Sometimes it's this one quiet guy. I've got this one boy, say young. Oh my gosh, he is so quiet. And his father came to see me because his father said since fifth grade that everyone says he doesn't speak in class. And I said, well, it's going to change now because he has to at least say one thing or the group or the class won't get an A. Now, they're not going to gang up on him, but the first time someone just turned and said, what do you think? The simplest, nicest thing, and Say Young said something. So the next time, he started, because then he had gotten the one thing done. You know, phew, he spoke. So what I think is very interesting, too, is talking to them at the end of class and say, so what did you get from this? And have them process what they learned. Now, one of the things is that because they don't quite know where it's going to go, it can be a bit jumbled at first. But what I found is if it does not go on and on and on and on, like you could stop it and, and, and say, we're, we're done here. The best thing that, that, that I've seen is that they own the work more than I've ever seen a class before. And the part that is, is hard for me is I didn't really have anything to do with it, except we set them up. And that's the whole point that, anyway, is that we sort of prime them, we send them out in, 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 into, into life and do that. So I've got um, a class. I asked them if they would like to be filmed. They said, yes, we would. <laughs> they loved it. Um, and so let's watch some of this and see how it looks in action. What we said the first time was, it's dependent on if you read. Now, what did I say? Well, the first time that I talked about this, I said, what, what do you think would make a good one of these? And what did you say? Do you, do you recall the first thing? Yeah, everyone should participate. Yeah, everyone should participate. Is it about being equal times to talk? No. Not equal, not like five, 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 five. But one of the things that is very interesting is, does one person dominate? Or do, and then what if, as I said in class, you, some of the people, let's say, Minji's not saying nothing, okay? Besides the fact that you want a group break an A, which is not really the only thing, what do we do about that? Eventually, I do shut up. <laughs> I talk a lot at the first of that. Now, you, you've not read the book that they've read, so it's fairly dull for you in a way. The point that I think is interesting is how long some of their responses are. That they're not a yes, no kind of thing. They're speaking for a paragraph. And they're trying to explain something or defend something. 
and I don't say a, a, anything for half an hour. One of the reasons why this is so good for us in school, it's going to prepare them for when they take a test and write an essay about something, and they've been responding. And they sort of know certain things of how to craft an answer. Now that's a large class. It's 20. Obviously it's easier in a smaller class, but we, sometimes we have a large class. You may have a class of 30 or 50. Ah! Oh my goodness. That's harder. And it's probably good to split them into smaller modules. You know, go through the model of here's the old fashioned way of doing school and we're all comfortable with that. It's also comfortable because somebody can hide in that class fairly easily. All, all, all you have to do is not raise your hand. Or if you call on somebody and they say, I don't know, and you just allow them to opt out of what you're doing. So one of the first things you have to do is explain to them why you want them to opt in to what they're doing and that they have to be prepared. They have to be accountable for that. And you have to explain this warmly and kindly so that they don't think it's mean. So that what you want is a model where they, they all speak, that they all feel that their voice matters. Now, if you go back to what teen teenager said, whoops, you know, here is what a student of mine said. They want to be in charge, but they want to feel empowered. And so one of the things, in fact, that is the biggest thing of what school must do. How do we empower them? You know, one of the things that um, we, we all face is that when kids cheat, why do they cheat? Well, they cheat because they don't feel smart enough to do the work, empowered enough. So how do you make them feel empowered enough, strong enough, mighty enough that their words mem count. So that is the key. If that can be solved, school can change. But here is what they want. This allows that because I'm not going to speak or tell them that, that they're wrong. They're in charge of it and they want to talk. But they have to feel that they have something good to say. Yes. From your own experience with the health inspector here, do you think that it's suitable for sciences where there are some mathematical errors? I think, sir, yes. I think um, after a lab, and I think of whenever you want to know what they think about something. I, 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 I'm a humanities guy, so it might work best for that, or that's just the way that my brain is wired. But why would, the, why would this not work in any class, really? At, at, at some points. Because the point is, you need to know what they think about things and what they know, and then you're going to be able to help them more too. So you come back to that, and what you might do is ask them, what do they want in an ideal classroom? And somebody is going to say that because that's what kids really feel and want. And then here's what we want. You know, we want them to want to know more. And one of the ways that we have to get that going is we have to sort of pique their interest and not just drill them on things. We have to make them want to know more. One of the things that I love to do is, 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 is teach artworks, and I'm not trying to teach the content, but trying to then say to them, like, here's an, um, a work. If I show them this in class, and the first thing that I always ask is, what do you see here? So they don't have to have any knowledge about the movement it comes from, who painted this, it's what do you see? And you, you, you can say, I see some dancers. Yes, good for you. Then the wonderful thing to ask is, what more do you need to know to have this make sense? Now, if you notice, I did not say, this, say the verb want to know. 
Because somebody might say, I don't want to know anything. <laughs> no, what do you need to know to have it make more sense? And they have to go, well, what do I need to know? So as they're constructing the knowledge, they're going to have their own um, understanding of it. So, so, so you come back to these things. I want to show you a, a clip from a colleague's class, so not just my class. So our question for today is, what makes an effective teacher? Um, I recently read a book by an author and it said that others shape the society and they are very much in terms of how society turns out, especially in the eyes of the foreigners or outsiders. And I thought that the same with effective teachers, especially effective teachers, because they influence and inspire students who end up being in the society and taking off the jobs the seniors had just gotten the, their jackets that's why they're all on they're so excited about the senior jackets now one of the things you want to work towards is that each one does not just say like 10 lines that they wrote in their head, but to connect to somebody else, to build on somebody else too. And the other thing to try to get them to do is connect to something in the text that, that they read. So one of, of, of the things that I use from this in class every day is that when I watch them, I get a better sense of what they think because it, it, it's not just a fill in the blank test. And when I have to write things about them, I build off of what they've said in class. So a lot of it is I know so much more about what they think now and not just how they've responded in, in class. Is there anything that you want to ask so far about this? Yes. Yeah, two questions about the process, if you don't mind. Um, how do they take turns? Do they raise their hands? Is there a student in charge to say anything? Right. Giving their opinion? And the second question is, what if the silent student is not approached by anyone? So no one turns to them and says, what do you think? Do you take charge? Right. Um, as I said, I interrupt about halfway through and ask how things are going. And if nobody has, or if somebody has not said something, um, I've never had it where somebody has not called on somebody eventually. But they feel strange doing it because they don't know that they're in charge or not. I don't put somebody in charge, but you could. Like what you might do is each day somebody is in charge. That's perfectly fine. I like to see where it just goes organically. And that one, one of the things too is if somebody dominates, which can happen, you probably talk to him or her outside of class and say, I need you to not talk so much. And they're like, but I have things to, to, to say. But uh, one of the things that we want to do is help them know when to speak and when not to speak. And so some of that is when you do the graphing and you've got those graphs, and if one of them has like 30 of them, it, it looks you know, out of sync. So the goal is to sort of be an equal kind of thing. 
Um, I think one of the biggest problems of why we're afraid of this is we're just afraid of what will happen because we have no control exactly. But you have to cede some of that control in the hopes that they're going to do that. Yes? How would you make sure that your standards have been uh, met by the kind of topics that the students lack in every day? Right. Well, one of the things that you might do at the end of class is discuss what your objectives were or are for them to get from that and tell them who hit on those objectives. And if they don't, then say, well, you missed a few things and then pick up on that. I mean, some of it is we have to have them become aware of what we want and not just tell them. And we have to find ways for, for them to be in charge of that. So one of the first things you might have to do is you might not do quite as much content. Now, you might, and that's a hard thing sometimes to swallow because you like your content. The problem is if, if you go back again to one of these things that I love so much that a, a, a colleague said, that they want them to learn enduringly, which means long past a test. So if I teach a few fewer points, but they learn them enduringly, that's better in, in the long run. So some of it is you've got to decide how do I prime them to be good at this? Because you want, to, you want these to go well. Now, one of the things that I've seen is colleagues don't know when to start this. And they say, well, maybe I'll start in November or the spring. And then you just put it off. And then you, well, I meant to, but I did, didn't get there. Start in the second week of school, the first week of school. Try it out for a small chunk of time and see how, how it goes. Talk them through it, because if they've not done this, they're not sure what to do. So you kind of just do the normal thing, and, and you say to them, what will make this go well? Now, if you go on too long and they start just saying the same things, stop that because that's not going to go forward either, because you, 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 you definitely want that. Could we connect to like, uh, um, the aim that they're going to achieve with the group work, like the, this, in this way, they will have a chance to talk. Yes. If they don't ask each other, then they're not going to get the Exactly. And as you said before, collaborative work is so key they're not good at it because we don't allow them enough time to practice that. Collaborative work is when you give and take and figure out how that, that, that can work. So you can explain to, to them and say, here's what I want. Here's what you are going to do. Let's see how it goes. So to go back to, let's see where we were. Yes. To add up to your point, it's, uh, it's each collaborative, but in a sense, it would be competitive. Yes. It can be, except you have to talk them through that as well. Because one of the things that they're afraid of is that you're just going to give one A or two A's. So if it's clear, it's a group grade. And the group grade is going to be based on the group norms and how the group goes. You talk them through that, and they start to think about, <coughs> about that. Um, in terms of how, how they compete, one of the things that my school is toying with is, do we change transcripts to send to colleges? Do we throw out grades and do something about what they've mastered? And I, I went to um, a, a conference about this, and there was a new model for showing transcripts. So I come back and show my class the model and ask them what they think. And one girl said, how will they know that I'm the best? And that, that's exactly what she thinks and fears. So one of the things you want to talk them through is what you get from doing this too, and to sort of, sort of not compete, but can you possibly you know, have it that they all succeed when they each pool their, 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 their insights? It takes some balance, but the biggest thing is just jump in and try it. What can go wrong, silence? We can live with silence, but silence is hard because they're all staring at us and they're like, uh-oh, silence means something. No, silence is not the worst thing. The worst thing, well, well what's the wor wor worst thing? Uh, I have a question. 
Let's say many of the teachers have classes that are pretty big, like yes. 30, 40. This is an ideal situation. We have 50, 60. What if you have a big class? How would you manage that? Well, I would try to split it up. I, I, I would try and split it up in, in, into two or three groups and put someone in, 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 in charge or if a colleague can come and monitor. Because they don't have to prepare for class, just come and draw lines. And you don't do this at least No, class. you do this, I mean, it depends on when, where I am in, in the school year. In the, in, in the first third of the year, it's frequent. But by the time that I'm to halfway through, they're doing this where it doesn't have to be so formally done anymore. And, they, and they're doing the things I want them to do. But that's why the beginning of the school year, you train them for what they want, for what you want them to do the way you want them to be doing it. Uh, would, it would it work to have people sitting in the middle and then you have people on the outside watching them? Yes. One way of doing it is to have somebody for each child there and to take notes or to write things that they wish that they had said or, or, or things that you might say and, and, and then switch. Because the, you're ma making them dependent on each other too and that they have to pool those insights. So some of it is to break down the I compete against you for the one or five A's in class. Right. Well, I think that if a colleague helps you out, it's easy. Here's the thing. I've only done A grades because they've just done it. It sounds so simple, but I think it's simple because they recognize all, all they have to do is respond. It doesn't have to be a right or wrong so much as it should build on what somebody else has said. And that's the key, 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 key thing too. To try to build, you know, if she is going, won't going to speak, she's going to build on what he said. He's going to then connect to what he, he said earlier. So what you've got is this web. They are competing each other. Yeah. Yes, so I think, the, I think one of the keys is the group grade of an A. You dangle that, because you kind of have to dangle that, and then they just take it. And so, and, and that boy that, that, that I said before, he still doesn't speak much, but he speaks at least twice. <laughs> and so the group gets an A. And he still is scared to speak because he does not think he's worthy enough to speak. So that's when you co coach them too, that they that their words count. Is there a quick word? <clears throat> there could be. I just haven't made one up because they've because they've just kind of done it. So, but make one up, sure. In, in terms of that. <coughs> yes. Did you ever go like you know? Did it ever happen where students were saying like wrong information? <coughs> yes. Yes. Um, it depends on how wrong it is. Because <laughs> I stepped in once and, and, and said, I need to just cor correct that one thing because it, it's not quite right. So yes. Um, I think what I would do is wait and see if somebody else notices that too and checks on that and works on that. And then if nobody does, then you might. Or you might at the end. It, it depends on, on, on how wrong it is and where it fits in. Yes. And yes. Have to do with facts yes. And, and they're at a younger age. Exactly. Because you know, like being precise matters as well, and not just talk, 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 talk. It's yeah. got to be precise as well. This method is better when students are let me, let me, used to it. Yes. Like early education, excuse me. <laughs> if they're used to it, they can apply it when they're. Exactly. Imagine if we start this at age seven, and then at 12, they know it. At 16, they're not as scared. Now, if they've not done this, you have to start somewhere. But don't, I mean, start tomorrow. <laughs> Just try it out. Don't say, well, I'll wait until November when they're good. No, 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 no. Just start out and get them and make them good. The, the traditional way of, like, what we're doing, not traditional, but in a way, they're, they sit in groups in the classroom, and they just <coughs> all the talking together, and each group at the end, they share what they, whatever they know, whatever they learn. Is it similar? Yes. Like,
it's similar. It's bigger. I think it feels more formal. And again, when, when, when you walk by a class and see this instead of this, it signals what your class is. You know, I'm just one of many. And then I'm not even saying anything for half an hour. Um, parents came in the fall, and I decided to do this. And that was a risk for me, because parents generally like when they see my class. And they say nice things to me, and I feel good. So I tried this, because I thought, well, if I'm doing this regularly, that should be what I show them. So I didn't say anything. And the class talked and talked and talked. And at the end, the moms and dads were thrilled. Um, not about me, because it's not actually about me. Surprise, surprise. They were saying, my, my kids spoke. My kids said a paragraph of stuff on gender roles. Who knew? And so it showcased them more, too. Not that that was the point to just showcase them, but to show how they now can speak and not just say yes, no, or correct a fact. So what about if we practice one? Could I get some volunteers? I have a nice poem, which we, we can read. And so let me first of all pass out the poem. Good morning. Do you mind to read this? OK. And then I'd like to, you know, let's read the poem first, and then we'll ask for some volunteers, because we should try it out too, see how it feels. Let's see, one, two, three, one, two, three. Good morning. Thank you. Four, five. One, three, four, five, six. Thank you. So th this is a poem that I love, and I think it has something to do with teaching. So I've asked a friend of mine who, who, who's here to read this aloud. Do you mind to stand? Lena Samawi, a, a colleague of mine, the woodcarver. The woodcarver. King, the master carver, made a bell stand of precious wood when it was finished. All who saw it were astounded. They said it must be the work of spirits. The Prince of Boo said to the master carver, What is your secret? King replied, I am only a workman. I have no secret. There is only this. When I began to think about the work you commanded, I guarded my spirit, did not extend it. On trifles that were not to the point, I fasted in order to say, my heart at rest. After three days fasting, I have forgotten gain and success. After five days, I had forgotten praise or criticism. After seven days, I had forgotten my body with all its limbs. By this time, all thought of your highness and of the court had faded away. All that might distract me from the work had vanished. I was collected in the single thought of the bell stand. Then I went to the forest see the trees in their own natural state. When the right tree appeared before my eyes, the bell stand also appeared in it, clearly, beyond doubt. All I had to do was to put forth my hand and begin. If I had not met this particular tree, there would have been no bell stand at all. What happened? My own collective thought encountered the hidden potential in the wood. From this live encounter came the work, which you ascribe to the spirits. Thank you. So I might assign this and say, in class, we'll discuss this. Now, what I could do is, in class, just tell you what I think it means. And I think that's great. <laughs> because I like what I think, but that's not the point. So what you could do is say, please read this and be prepared in class. 
So might I have some volunteers, like maybe eight or nine volunteers, or I'll call on people. <laughs> okay, volunteer, 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 volunteer. And you guys too. <laughs> so come here and sit here. <laughs> Thanks for volunteering. And I know it's sort of awkward in a way because we're all watching, but I want them to sort of feel what it feels like to do this. Um, and I will draw my lines. Now, the first thing that you think of too is you worry about, I've got to say something. So you think about that, but once you've said the first thing, the point then is to hear what others have said and respond and agree or not agree. So um, someone, I'm sure, will begin. So I'll stop you, but what did that feel like, if I can ask you to share? I mean, it's a li little false because we're all watching you. <laughs> um, what did it feel like in terms of being a part of a group and being dependent upon each other? Good. Because I'm talking with people who are just like me, and I felt like they're not going to be judging me. And you all know about the same amount, too, yeah. which is nice, too. It's not as, I mean, it doesn't have to feel competitive. It doesn't have to. One thing is, we are doing this thing. And yes. I'm waiting and listening and I'm trying to process what you are saying, what other ladies are saying, in order to make it sound uh, like comment. If I'm yes. not listening or not paying attention or fooling around, I won't be able to answer. Right. Correct. I also like felt that I want to understand what the person said. I went back to what they uh, referred to mm -hmm. my exactly who said it from their perspective. So it is have your kind of respect of the other. Correct. And one one of, of 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 the things that we all get when when we grade kids' work is that we get to hear all the insights. I love that, but they don't get to hear those insights as we grade. And so here they get to hear um, a line or a phrase or a word that someone likes and and, and feel strongly about. I mean, here's some some something that a student said: doing this. is like this, <laughs> one plus one equals three, which we all know is not three. But what she said was, it's, it's not just my brain and somebody else's brain, it's all of the brains and it's something new. It's explosively new. And that can change the way your, your class feels. I think it helps the higher level of thinking, which is that critical thinking. Exactly. Yeah. It picks up on that. It gives uh, self-confidence for the girls to talk uh, freely. Yes. You're not going to judge them for anything. You are talking together. Yes. And if they're scared, and some of them are going to be scared because that's life, then when they read this at night, they can plan what they're going to say. You know, and write it out if, if they must. And then it's not just, I'm going to call on you because I'm mean. It's that you're all going to say something because that's how the group can, uh, um, can, can best work. You know what's special about this? Like, I had a feeling like I need to say something which has to be a good idea, but I still did not feel any pressure uh, because of that. So I wanted to do that. I wanted to say something that is deep, something that is analytical. So I feel this is something very important about this yeah. And frankly, all, 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 all you have to start with is name a line that you like. Mm -hmm. Name one line that, get, that makes you choose. feel something. You get to choose what makes yes, you, you can choose it and it's not right or wrong like, like there's just one. One of the things that we have to fight too is that when we wrap up the class that we say, well, here's what I think. It's not really about that. And yes, we will think about it probably more sophisticatedly than they will, but it's not about just sharing that. 
Um, I want to, I'll come back to that, but here's just something that comes up a lot. What about the content? What about exams? Because that is such a key thing. Here's the big thing that I've realized in, in, in the last few years. If all I'm doing is, is, is content, I'm redundant anyway. I'm not as fast as Google. And if all we're doing is to convey facts, we don't even matter anymore because they can find it on their phones faster and more reliably. So that's the first thing that made me think, oh my gosh, I've got to do something. So one of the things that you have to do is decide what of your content do you need? Because if you spend a whole class doing this and they go in into this in depth, they then know how to do this with anything. And then we don't need to be there to be the, the crutch for them anyway. And that's a huge thing. So here's why it makes sense. Teenagers, as we know, like groups. They feel a sense of belonging in, in a group. They have stuff to say, but they don't feel smart enough sometimes. They like to be asked what their opinions are. Those kinds of things. One of the things that I think is very interesting is that you have to create an environment of how do you speak because you don't raise your hand. What if you both begin to speak at the same time? Well, somebody has to seed and be polite. You have to learn that. Um, the, the results are measurable and it's active. It is active and we see what they're doing and we hear what they're thinking about things. Here's some more things. It can take those who are a bit immature, you coach them through, you make that work. It is not memorizing. That might be good for one test, short-term gains, short-term gains. It doesn't mean that they've learned much about th th that at all. They can challenge each other. How do you do that and teach them about that? Um, it's the whole capacity to observe. It's the whole thing about the trust. That's a wonderful thing. So here's the thing that I think is, it's not so much a methodology. It, it's that you're going, going to change the way your room works and that what they think matters. Um, should we try one more? Can I get eight new volunteers? I got one. I need a few more or she's going to do, do a monologue. Do you want to stay there? Couple more? No, you, no, you may leave the table or you may stay. <laughs> Come and join. Anyone else? Please, come join. I'm going to give you a painting, which is a little harder in a way because there are no words. But the question is, let me show you what the question is. Um, it's by Degas, so, so you do not have to guess who made this. You don't have to say it's impressionist because it's not about that. It's essentially, what do you see? I'll give you guys a, a moment to stare at this and I'll pass out some copies to the rest. I do this a lot in class and these don't ever appear on a test. And the point is, just get them to talk. I stopped doing this for about a month, and I gave one out a week or two ago. The class clapped, because they were glad to be doing an art work again. Who, you know, who knows? There you go. You're welcome. One, two, three, four, five. So here's what I'd like you guys to think about. What do you think that Degas wants us to know about these dancers? Okay? What do you think he might want us to think about this? It's not so much about facts, and it's just a guess. And none of you probably have seen this, right? That's even better. 
Because <laughs> then you're all starting at, at exactly the same point. I'm sure somebody is going to start. I'm going to stop you. Um, what is something that, that somebody else said that you hadn't seen or thought about? What's a comment that somebody made that you thought, that was nice, I really liked that. I liked Hanadi's idea of the stage being the mic. I know, that's so poetic. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Now, the fact that, that somebody else did not say that or think that, that's wonderful too. It's part of this that I need you too, and not just one brain and one brain is two brains, it's that you transform that. Um, anything else in terms of what somebody said that you appreciated? Now, the point of doing this might be just to have them to wonder about something and then to try and go find out. Or I might tell them things, too. But if we don't give them things and get them to just start to think, I wonder what this means, think about life and doing the very same thing. Um, what did it feel like to watch them in terms of this group? Yes. If, if one of them or maybe all of them, they didn't get the point that want them, or your objective, your objective. Should it be guided by you? Probably, yes, 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 at some point, because what, what you might say is, you know, some scholars have said, because one, one of the things is that if they've not seen this, they're starting from scratch, and they won't have spent time on this the way we will. But I think what you m might do too is take some of the points that they've said, put those points th on the board, and then have them connect those dots. Because invariably they're going to connect then something, but they need practice doing it, and it might take twice to do that. Yes, it's faster if I say, here's what I, th I, I think it means. Right. But since that's how we normally teach, to what end is that anyway? It's just what I think. But one of the things you might do is write down some of the facts or thoughts, put those on the board, have each of them come up and, you know, draw lines and connect them and say something. Oh my gosh, when I've done that, they normally say things that I haven't thought of myself. That's the most fun. Because if they say the same things that I think, it's sort of a bit dull. Can the teacher direct them a little bit, maybe? Let, let's say you want to put, you want them to focus on the, the color scheme, yep. and then no one has said anything. Right. You can turn yes. and say, focus on, on the choice of color, yes. and then pull out again. So what you might do is do what I did, did, did here, and, and just ask something directly, or ju 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 just say someone is going to start. So depend, yes. Certainly, you say, here's what we're going to do, to think about Degas' background and how it shows his background, that kind of thing. You, you're, you, you're in charge of how much to direct. Yes. Can I be a participant of the discussion taking place as a teacher, or I'm really sorry? Um, I think it's best not to, and I fight that urge too, because I want to share something that I have. I think it is because they're going to defer to you. Because you're the one who has the college degree, you're the one who's the adult. And so the biggest thing that we can actually do, that I can do, is stop talking. <laughs> and when I do, I've been surprised that they have a lot to say. It's not just me. Did, did, did you recount yes, that's wonderful too. Yes, that is wonderful too. Or you could have a ball of yarn and have the yarn go so that they actually hold the yarn and they see the webbing. You know, that's something to do, especially with, with um, young kids. I mean, one of the things that you want them to do is, is, is to feel the network and how much they need each other. And then they start to get this as well. 
of what that means. And so the ball of yarn, except you might have that bad boy who wants to, you know, just throw the ball of yarn and not to hold on to the yarn. You have to know your own kids, too. Uh, but you won't give them uh, direct information about anything or you are going to demand what are they saying? It's up to you. It depends on what you if want from it. Wrong, they say, yes. What are you going to do? I would probably interrupt after I've seen if somebody else has found, has said something about that. And so I just gently interrupt and say, well, that's not quite the right fact, and I'll set that straight. It probably won't happen that much, to be honest. Um, one of the things about this that I, I've said a few times, you just have to jump in and trust them and tell them you trust them, too, to do this. Adults have a hard time doing this. You know, this is not a simple thing. What did it feel like to be on display? I mean... It's not easy to think on the spot and give ideas. Right, you have to think on the spot, and the other adult adults here are watching you. Yeah. But once you begin to speak, it kind of is e easy, because you're all in this together as a team somewhat. I was going to ask a question. How did you put out the I would, well, I would wrap it up probably, I would try to avoid saying what I think it means. Because that's what I want to do, because I prob probably like what I think it means. But I think you want to say, is there one line that somebody said, said today that embodies the whole piece? And it could be yours, that we are all on this stage of life, and, and, and we're all in, in some way doing our own dance. You know, but try to get, get, get them to have consensus, and based on what? Just the sound of it, the poeticness, or the, you know, how valid it is. But you try to get them, the more that they're doing the work, the more that it's going to pay off in the end as well. Uh, to keep them hooked, maybe you could have them write a question, like a burning question they had at the end, and you would collect those questions, and then you yes. Yep, you can show those as well. So, um, so we'll wrap this up, but I, but I hope that the point of this is just to say, here's a great new way to do class and to cede control to them and teach them how to work as a team. Um, just to go back to this for a second, one, one of the things that I love about this work, I know I'm, I shouldn't be doing this, but here's what I think, He's not even making the bell. It's just the stand. And he's been obsessed by the stand. And I think it's a lot of our work in terms of how we get obsessed about, essentially we're creating for them the stand on which their own bell is going to sound. So I'm gonna join my comment and, and, and yours, that they are on the stage of life, and how well do we prepare them for that? So thank you guys for joining me first thing in the morning. And good luck. Try it out. Try it out.